Mr. Woodruff, you've tested positive for HIV. Have you ever used intravenous drugs? Have you ever engaged in homosexual conduct? Homo, homo. Did you say homo? You made a mistake. Mm -hmm. That ain't me. Mr. Woodruff, we estimate you have 30 days left. Last year, you said you were in the midst of a reconnaissance, and it is continuing in Somebody such else a good said way. that, and I repeated them. It's so good, though, this movie. It's so shocking and beautiful, but all I could think about was the physical anguish you must have been going through and what it would have been like to walk through the world when you weren't on set and you actually had to deal with real life in that body and in that mind frame. What did that do to your real life? I was pretty much a hermit while I was doing this. Just because one, I wasn't eating, so I wasn't gonna go have a meeting at a steakhouse. No. I wasn't going to put myself into that temptation. You should have banned craft services from this whole set. No, I, I didn't see them. It didn't matter. I was, I was locked off. I, by that point, by the time I was on set, I was locked in. And it wasn't an option to go nibble. You know? <laughs> no. So the other thing was I didn't go out much into the real world because I had to get pale. I couldn't go to Hawaii like no. you just did. And uh, it takes a long time for my skin to get pale. So... <laughs> I was inside. If, it, if the sun was out, I was inside. Most of my life and my own life is the opposite. The sun's out, I'm outside. I was always inside. And so I became more of a night guy. Didn't and I, that twist you a little bit? I mean, taking away the physical activity, which is something that I think a lot of people associate with you, taking away, you know, what most people would do, like, in everyday life. Yeah, but it became, it was a whole nother exercise. It was that exercise. I mean, because everything was from the neck up now. And so where I'd get bored and frustrated and anxious. I knew I had to get more creative up there and entertain myself. Did more writing, did more reading, much more writing and much more reading than I've ever done. News flash for y'all. There ain't nothing out there can kill Ron Woodruff in 30 days. The drugs, they just released their testing and I know this hospital's one of the sides. I need it. It doesn't work that way, Mr. Woodruff. Where are you going? They got good meds out of Mexico that's better than what you can get here in the States. This is protein, totally non-toxic. And you can't buy this in the USA? Not approved. You could be making a fortune off of it. You look great. Actually, I'm amazing. Anything to declare? Nada. They're importing illegal drugs for sale. It's a very serious offense. They're not illegal. They're merely unapproved. I was thinking about this character, and it reminded me of another character you played with a similar name. Woodruff and Wooderson, two men who are charming womanizers who live and die by the credo, just keep living. You just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. Yeah. And yeah, I never associated that, but they are somewhat related, aren't they? One's probably a little, a little easier to be around, but both are just a whole lot of fun. <laughs> I've been looking for you, Lone Star. Mr. Tinkerbell, unless you got more cash or new clients, I'm busy. You don't deserve our money. Cut you in. 5%. 25. Take it or leave it. Welcome to the Dallas Buyers Club. I have a bone to pick with you. Yeah. Which is how dare you take such a long break from acting. Oh, thank you. No, I'm serious. I'm mad. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, but now you come back and chances are you're going to get an Oscar nomination. Well, you say that. I, I, I'm, that's, uh, it's not even uh, in my uh, head right now. I'm just happy to be here talking to you. You crushed this movie thank and made you. it your bitch. Thank you. When you're jumping back into a role like this, obviously Mark Boland was a huge inspiration, mm -hmm. but were there any women that you looked to and you were like, if I could be a girl, I'd want to be that girl. Yeah, there were a lot of women that Rayon loved and, and looked uh, looked up to. You know, some people uh, she thought were fabulous at that time were like Olivia Newton-John. Give uh, me Xanadu, girl. Yeah. Give me Xanadu. So, and that was fun to revisit that time period. Uh, and some of the more fun uh, parts of the research, other parts were really touching and and, and incredibly moving, spending time with transgendered people and learning about their stories and challenges. And uh, I learned a lot, I listened a lot, uh, and I worked a lot. 
did you go out in character before you were shooting the film? Oh, well, yeah. What was the response you got? Well, it's hard. You couldn't really not go out in character when you lost that much weight and you, you didn't have any eyebrows because you waxed them off. Um, you know, it was hard to disappear completely. So that was interesting to see, you know, how people look at you when you walk through Whole Foods in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, it, it was an interesting experience all around. I learned a lot. And it really, it really is something I'll keep with me for a long time. What were some of the things you learned? Well, I learned, number one, I learned about uh, uh, levity. I learned about uh, how you can take adversity and you can let that feed you. You know, you can fight for what you believe in, make the impossible possible. I think this is a group of dreamers, Dallas Buyers Club. It's, it's almost the Dreamers Buyers Club. These are people that are, I think that they can, with their will and their determination, make the impossible their reality. And that's a wonderful lesson to, to be reminded of. Are you treating these people? I don't treat them well. I ain't selling drugs, I'm selling membership. Walker, Dorset. He's your patient? Yes, sir. Girls whose names are players on the Dallas Cowboys. Makes a hell of a point, What the hell is it? I have a court order permitting us to confiscate any and all non-FDA approved supplements. We need a new supply. Check Amsterdam, Ghana, and Israel. We can do business with you. You made him so effusive and wonderful, and that's why the movie's so affecting, is because as you're watching this man go through it, and knowing that he's dying inside, yeah. but there's so much life in him, yeah. it was just an amazing thing to watch. Oh, thank you. I mean, he he's a wild ass, man. He's a bastard, SOB, blasphemic son of an SOB, man. But he, you can't help but, as his family said, geez, he was the best son of a bitch. But we couldn't help but love him. And he was that, we know those people. I know, everyone knows that person. You're like, oh, God, I can't help but like him. Why are we here? Nice restaurant, beautiful woman. That's where I feel like a human again. You ain't alone. Mr. Woodruff, what is oh, going wow. on? People are dying. You're nothing more than a common drug dealer. TJ Strayon. Freaking homo. Oh. In some ways, like this movie was my childhood fantasy from 1995 come to reality. Oh, really? I'm like, Jordan Catalano and Wooderson in the same movie? This is so exciting. I'm glad you liked it. But no, I didn't uh, like it. I loved it. When you look back at the start of your career, are you ever like, ooh, I wish I'd done things differently, or are you really proud? Because I love the work you did at the start. I, I don't look back too much, to tell you the truth. When, when even a film like this, when I'm done, I'm, I'm kind of done. And, uh, you know, I, I did my job. Uh, and uh, I, I don't dwell on it. I, I, I keep looking for it. That kind of keeps me sane, I think. Uh, and there's a lot to look forward to. Will you please act some more for me? Please? Maybe. No, I need a promise, please. Yeah, okay. No, I'm serious. Okay. Pinky? Okay. I need one! Here we go. Yeah! I miss you acting. No! <laughs> Don't do it. I'm serious. <laughs> Home. Get ready for Oscar season, kids. <laughs>